Hi, I'm Natasha, the Education and Promotion Manager at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Land Care, or CIRCLE, which is based in Perth, Western Australia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a reptile which depends on us to keep its home healthy, clean and intact. You will learn about why the animal on which this soft toy is based is so unique and what we can do to ensure its survival. This turtle lives in fresh water in places like rivers, lakes, dams and wetlands. It's called the Southwestern Snake Neck Turtle because it is only found in the southwest of Western Australia and it has a long neck that looks a bit like a snake. It has had lots of different names in the past and they all describe something about the turtle. It was called the Side Neck Turtle because it can't pull its head and neck back into its shell like other turtles can to protect themselves and so it puts its neck around the side of and under its shell instead. It is also often called the oblong turtle because whilst most turtles have a round shell, the southwestern snake neck turtle has an oval or oblong shaped shell. And the name you may know it by, the long neck turtle, is because unlike a lot of turtles, it has a very long neck. I'll now describe the different parts of the southwestern snake neck turtle's body. At the end of their long neck, they have a head, on which they have two eyes, a mouth, and two nostrils. Turtles use their long neck a bit like a snorkel, with the nostrils on the end allowing them to breathe whilst the rest of their body is still under the water. They don't have any teeth, but they have strong jaws and use their claws at the end of their legs for digging and breaking food apart. Their webbed feet are used for swimming and help them move through the water faster, like we do when we are wearing flippers while swimming. The shell is made up of bones and it grows with them so they can't get a new one if something happens to it. The top of the shell is called the carapace and the bottom of the shell is called the plastron and they are joined by a bridge. The shell is covered in scoop, which are plates of skin made of keratin, which is the same stuff that makes up our finger and toenails. Males have a longer tail than females, however the females are larger in size. The vent contains the reproductive organs of the turtles, and in the females, it is where the eggs will come out. So who knows the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? The main difference is that a turtle lives mostly in water, whilst tortoises live on land. A turtle can live in fresh water, like the southwestern snake neck turtle, or in salt water, like sea turtles. Freshwater turtles have webbed feet with claws, Marine turtles, or sea turtles, have flippers. Both leave the water to lay their eggs. A tortoise lives on land. They have big clumpy feet and much more rounded shells. No tortoises live naturally in Australia. Southwestern snake neck turtles are considered the top predator when in the water, meaning nothing in there wants to eat them. Adult turtles eat frogs, tadpoles, fish, marron, and macroinvertebrates such as insects, crustaceans, snails, and worms. They can even eat baby water birds. Hatchlings or baby turtles eat aquatic plants and midge and mosquito larvae. Male and female turtles get together from June to September to mate, which means they make the eggs in the female turtle from which the baby turtles will hatch. When the weather is right during September to January, the female turtle will leave the wetland to go in search of a spot to lay her eggs. She might have to walk up to 800 metres from the water to find a suitable spot. When she finds a nice sandy spot, she lays between 2 and 16 eggs, which she covers with sand before she returns to the wetland. The eggs will remain in the sand for about 220 days, after which the turtles will hatch out of their eggs and walk back to the wetland. When they are born, the turtles are only very small, with a shell as big as a 20 cent coin, so they have a long way to travel. One or two might make it back to the wetland alive and grow big enough to start the life cycle again. In the water, turtles don't really need to be worried about another animal eating them. Out of the water, however, the adults, babies and eggs are at risk of being eaten by feral and native animals, including foxes, dogs, black rats and birds such as ravens, ducks, cormorants and magpies. When moving around out of the water, turtles also have to watch out for road traffic and things that stop them from moving from place to place. Adults and babies can be run over as they cross roads which are built too close to water bodies. 
Fences around wetlands and box-shaped curbs on the side of the road also stop them from getting to where they need to be. Another big problem for turtles are all the buildings being built on the wetlands they live in and the stuff making the water in the remaining wetlands dirty. The places where they live are being destroyed to make way for houses and the water they swim in is being polluted by too many nutrients which causes algae blooms. Too much of that green slimy algae makes it difficult for turtles to swim and means they have less food available as the algae stops the light getting to the plants and uses up the oxygen in the water and this causes the plants and animals that turtles eat to die. So if you see a turtle when you are out and about, should you pick it up? Well, there are only two reasons you should pick up a turtle and only do so if your mum, dad or another adult is with you. The first reason is if they are in danger, such as when they are crossing a road. An adult can make sure it is safe to go onto the road and if it is, you can pick them up and take them to the other side of the road in the same direction in which they are travelling. Don't take them back to the wetland as they know where they are going and chances are it is a female that needs to find somewhere to lay her eggs. The second reason is if the turtle is hurt, such as with a cracked shell. In this case, put it in a box and take it to the nearest native animal rescue centre, which if you are in Perth, Western Australia, could mean visiting Native Ark in Coburn, or the Armadale Reptile Centre, or calling the Wild Care Helpline on 9474 9055, and they will direct you to someone who can help take care of the injured turtle. If you are picking up a southwestern snake neck turtle, hold it as shown in this photo. With your thumbs on the carapace or top of the shell and your fingers on the plastron or bottom of the shell so that the turtle's claws, head and neck are pointing away from you. One reason to hold the turtle like this is so that you can't be scratched. But the other reason is because southwestern snake neck turtles are a bit like skunks. They spray stinky stuff from near their tail if they become worried they might be hurt as a way of getting you to put them down. It's so stinky you would probably have to throw your clothes away if it gets on you, so it's better to face that part of the turtle away from you. To help protect the southwestern snake neck turtles, there are a couple of things you can do. Your school can become a Turtle Watch accredited school by going to the A squared E squared WA website. If you see a turtle while you're out and about, you can go to the Climate Watch website and record where and when you saw it. This will help the scientists and people who are looking after the turtles know more about them. But the main thing we can all do to help protect our unique southwestern snake neck turtles is to protect our wetlands, rivers and the surrounding bushland from pollution and development. The southwestern snake neck turtles and all of us here at the Phosphorus Awareness Project at Circle would like to thank you for listening.